Hey guys, it's Mikkel and I just wanted to give you guys an update. Um, I haven't been able to, ever since school started this fall, I haven't been able to find a decent time, like rhythm, to even come on here at all. Um, as you guys know, I started teaching seminary, so that kind of threw me for a loop. It was literally like taking on a part-time job with homeschooling my kids and everything else on top of that. So it's taken me a while to kind of find the groove and get in there, but I think I've finally got hold of everything. Um, also, you know, my husband's still working from home, and so, and my kids just always seem to be around. You guys know the drill. So it's just almost nearly impossible to find time to get on here. Um, I, as you can see, I got a little microphone, because that's something that I've, you guys have said, is that I need better audio so here I put my little microphone in here and I'm planning to run a little podcast just take the audio and put it on my website for those of you that maybe don't pop on YouTube um, you can just listen to the audio as you're a folding laundry all right I have received a lot of emails um, from you guys asking if I'm okay especially living in Portland um, I think the world knows about Portland right now. Um, we're constantly on the worldwide news, the global news. Let's, one of the emails I received was from Claire. And she said, I've been seeing a lot of Portland, Oregon news lately, and I've been wondering how it has been for a family of faith during these crazy times. Is it as bad as the news show? Okay, so there's different, different sides of the news, right? And that's kind of what she's pointing out. Um, what is it really like here? Well, you guys, before it was on the news, it was bad. So I have been seeing Portland, um, the effects of a, a, a city of sin, a city of pure wickedness and perversion. I've seen the effects for years. Um, and now the world gets to know about it because it's gotten so bad. It's bad. I can tell you that it is very, very bad. The city has fallen. It has fallen. It is burning. Um, it may not be literally burning every night, but sometimes it is literally burning every night. Um, and it's just, it's, it's the consequence. It's the consequence of wickedness. Um, you cannot choose wickedness and live in a peaceful society. You just can't. And the, the choices of this, this city, of this state, of this nation, the immoral laws that have been passed, um, we're just seeing the consequences, you guys. The blood has been spilt on this land, this covenant land, and it's we're seeing it. We're seeing the effects of that. This is, we're kind of reaping what we sowed in this nation, and I am firsthand in Portland seeing it with my own eyes, and I get so many people asking, like, why do you still live there? Why don't you leave? Well, okay, I, I would love to just, like, drive out and find somewhere I don't know if there is anywhere in the world that is not touched by what we're seeing, right? Um, but as our prophet said, I, I choose to let God prevail. I choose God. I don't choose fear. I don't choose an escape plan of my own. Um, God wants me here. He, he, he has planted me here. I don't know if you guys saw a year ago, remember my YouTube video when I drove by this house and I knew my my bosom was burning and the, the Lord was saying this, you need to move right now to this house. So I know in God's divine plan, I'm supposed to be here. He physically moved me to this house. Um, and I can't deny that. I'm supposed to be here for a great purpose and I don't know, I don't know the whole purpose, but uh, maybe it's to be an eyewitness of these things so I can um, speak of them and be a witness to the the wickedness and, that I see right in front of my face. I see it, you guys. And often it is all-consuming, right, to live in this dark city that is falling before my eyes, that is in chaos before my eyes. Often it is so overwhelming, but, um, but I know that, that I... I am with Jesus. I am with him and I'm doing his work. And um, this is prophecy unfolding. And I am a witness 
to prophecy, to everything that was written in the scriptures, I'm seeing them unfold. And how miraculous is that? I would choose to be on the front lines and witness it. Okay, I've always been one, whenever we study Joan of Arc or, you know, the founders of this nation or um, any valiant follower of Jesus Christ that stands and does his mission and lets God prevail and is persecuted because of it, because that is, we will be persecuted when we stand for liberty and truth. Whenever I teach those, those, uh, the stories of these people to my kids in homeschool, I just get this fire in me and I'm like, I want to be one of them. I want to be crowned among them. I want to stand next to those brave souls with a crown and, and uh, be able to approve myself. Right. Um, so I think this is a little part of that. Um, maybe I asked for it. I probably did <laughs> up in, when we lived with heavenly father, heavenly mother, and all, we were all together before this, this earth life. I know that I raised my hand and I was like, I want to do something brave, right? Um, I want to witness this. So that is why I'm here. Partly, I know I don't see my whole mission ahead, but that's why we stay in Portland because God wants us here and I choose to let God prevail and not let fear prevail. So, okay, last conference, you guys. Let's just take a moment to breathe that all in. Um, it was absolutely fantastic. It was, it was magnificent. It, it was a parting of the veil to me. Um, I know we all got different things out of conference, but the week prior, I don't know if you guys experienced this like I do the week before conference, um, or before really any huge spiritual, uh, experience or huge, um, beautiful thing, you know, that comes from God a week before, I always go through this uh, pole of the adversary where he's just coming down on me and attacking me and and trying to discourage and and uh, you know all this contention and that's kind of the week before conference and so I was experiencing that and I knew I knew that it was a testimony the opposition was a testimony to me of many things that were going to be revealed to me um, and that alone brought me hope right? That alone can give us courage when we're experiencing this opposition. Um, just know that it is a witness that Satan is trying to stop the light from coming through. So keep going, right? Keep pulling through. So conference comes and just from the door opening of the prophet standing up there to the end, it was like a outpouring of revelation, of confirmations of the spirit guiding me and, and helping my eyes be opened and my ears be open to things that weren't even said. Um, oh, parables that were spoken that Heavenly Father revealed to me through parables, stories that were told, different messages, um, underlying messages um, for me and just for the future and it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. All right, one of the things that among among the, the many, um, one thing that was kind of like, I don't know if it was a reprimand from God, but um, it was in the women's session when President Irene spoke, oh my goodness, about the women and Zion and, and New Jerusalem and the city of Enoch and all that. It was just so much, so much heavenly, prophetic words but he did close as he was closing his talk he I have it right here he said Heavenly Father sent you into the world with unique gifts that you promised to use to bless others okay that was like in his last closing statement and it hit me I was like okay I have not known how to if I'm supposed to be on YouTube if my call is done I've totally felt sometimes that, you know, I, I come on here and I see all you amazing moms making these YouTube tutorials and day in the life and showing the curriculum and teaching other mothers how to do. And I just think it's incredible. It's already there. Like, I don't need to come on anymore. There's plenty of that. Like these moms are awesome. Why do they need me? Right. Um, but with that, that president Irene had spoken, it was like, 
kind of a little bit like, a, a, you know, tapping on my shoulder, like, you are not done with this gift I gave you. So, um, so that that's partly why I'm coming on here right now. I, I don't know what my channel will look like from here forward. I, everything I do is around my home and teaching my children truths. And, um, that is everything that I am and everything that I do. So obviously home learning is totally a focus. Um, but also it's Jesus and it's his restored gospel and it's preparing for him to come. We're there, you guys. We're, it's time. Like I really, really, really feel <laughs> listening to the prophet. Um, I have his talk right here. His talk to the women. He said, embrace the future with faith. Um, and he gave three things. Okay. I have it right here. Um, actually do I have it right here? Yeah. <laughs> he gave three principles. Okay. To basically face the future with faith and be prepared. And on that number one list was create places of security. And again, hold on. And again, he says home, your home. I don't know how many times he has to say this. He's been saying it home, 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 home. Every time he talks, home, home, home. I don't know if if we're not getting it by now. If if it hasn't sunken in yet, I don't know if it ever will for you. Um he is telling us, I know we all hear something different, but I just cannot interpret his calling us and our children to be home. I can't interpret it any other way. Um, and I, I, I just, it's such a huge piece of the puzzle, especially as our world is getting more, just more divisive and the schools are getting more indoctrinated and, um, it's just a mess out there. He is again, pulling us and telling us and sounding the watch cry. He's sounding the watch cry. And I don't know if this is the final one, but he is sounding it that we are places of safety is at home. Okay. So just to give you a line from the prophet, he says, um, when your home becomes a personal sanctuary of faith, where the spirit resides, your home becomes the first line of defense. Um, I just always imagine in war, um, when they are, you know, maybe in the trenches, right? Our homes were kind of in the trenches because this is super hard, right? To be with our kids every day. It's, it's amazing, but it can be very hard. Um, I, you know, when you send your little soldiers out from, out of those trenches into the battle, they are going to be shot at, right? They're going to be hurt. And that is not where we want them. They need to be at the first line of defense with us. Um, ah, so huge. Which, which brings me to our job right now, at least my job, is to um, prepare my army. Okay, the prophet mentioned, he kept mentioning in his talk about Embrace the Future with Faith, he kept referencing Moroni. Um, you guys, I, Moroni's always been one of my favorites because he's like a firecracker. <laughs> he's such a firecracker. And he, he leads his army. He never gives up. Like the prophet said, he doesn't stop preparing. He keeps going and he keeps going and going and he's ready. All right, so we are in a sense little Moronis, or I guess you could say little Helamans, leading our little striplings. Um, and if you look at Helaman, um, as you know, he speaks of his, his army, his, he always says his little band, his little army. And that's what our job is right now is to, um, beef up, beef up our house, build it, build it upon that rock. And we need to be in the trenches. We need to be ready. We need to, um, get our children ready, get our armor, army ready and lead our army. And that was the main thing at conference. It was a cry of prepare. 
you know, get your strongholds up, gather your food. Um, you know, it's time. It, it's coming. This, what we've seen right now, it, it's only a, a little, little sliver. Um, I believe it was God's merciful way of shaking us, of waking us up and preparing us for the real deal, for what's coming. Um, and when I hear Ugdorf say, God will do something unimaginable. I think big, you guys, I, I've never been one to just, I, I think huge, right? Just like I told you, I want to be like a Joan of Arc. Okay. I, I go big. <laughs> I just do. When he said that, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking Jesus is coming. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay. I need to wrap it up, but I am just excited. I'm excited to be back here. Um, like I said, I don't exactly know what the Lord will have me come talk about, but I am his instrument and I'm only being faithful. And my job here is not done apparently. So <laughs> I will see you guys soon. Bye.